welcome to Wetlands 101. What is a wetland? Today we're going to look at two different types of wetlands that exist in Delaware. Delaware is a very flat state with 90 miles of coastline. Being so flat it doesn't drain very well and we have a lot of different types of wetlands. Um, one fun fact about wetlands in Delaware is that almost any location in the state is usually about a mile away from wetlands. Um, today we're going to show you uh, two different types of wetlands that are common in Delaware and a few characteristics that define them. There are three important signs to look for when looking for a wetland. Soils, vegetation, and water. So we're here right now in a classic tidal salt marsh. Um, this area here is fed by the Delaware Bay. The tides come in and inundate this area twice a day and feed this area with water and nutrients and um, fresh sediments. So here we have taken a soil core from the tidal marsh and you can see down in the hole that the water level is very high. That's a sign of just a high water table. And you can see from the core that's laying out on the ground that the, the hydric soils are uh, ranging from gray to very dark. So due to the fact that these soils are constantly wet, there are certain chemical processes that go on in the soil and one of those uh, creates the, the distinct smell of tidal marsh, the hydrogen sulfide. Smells a little bit like rotten eggs. That's characteristic of a salt marsh. Yeah, we've now moved to a forested wetland here in Delaware and this, uh, this wetland type makes up about three quarters of our, our wetlands. You can see we're in a, a low area which we would say is a, a depressional or a woodland pool here. Um, which has recently dried up. Um, they're typically wet in the winter and spring and now it's June so this one has really just started to dry. And some folks might not realize that this is even a wetland because there is no surface water right now but there is some some groundwater here and to be a wetland you have to have the hydrology of water during the growing season so it has to be enough to affect your plant community in a way that they can tolerate growing in those wet conditions. So we have some wetland species here. Uh, behind us we have some grasses. So here we have a blueberry bush, a high bush blueberry, and a, a clethora, a sweet pepper bush plant that are growing on a nice hummock. And you can see that there's a moss line just at the top of the, or just at the bottom of the plant here that's actually elevated. So when the water table is high here, the water comes up and the moss line will actually grow above the water when it's at its peak. Here we have a, a black gum, a mature black gum, which is found in very wet areas. Uh, so growing along the surface here, we have sphagnum, which is a very a wet conducive plant as well. It grows in very wet areas. Here in our forested wetland, the, the surface does appear dry, but the groundwater is uh, you know, about 10 centimeters or so below the surface, and it's just started to recede uh, since we're in June now. But you can see the soil is a very, very dark color and has a very soft texture. And it has a very high degree of organic matter in it, um, which is typical in, in some of our forested wetlands. In our non-tidal wetlands, they do offer a, a great resource for habitat, both plant and wildlife, as well as provide a great source for uh, rainwater and flood storage. Um, you can see in this area that the water level is down so if we were to get a heavy rain it would be able to absorb that water and not flood someone's property or upland property with a home on Since it. Some of our, our wetlands in Delaware do appear dry. Uh, it does cause uh, some issues with folks not knowing that we have these wetlands and and can lead to some of them being uh, developed or converted to agriculture and since Delaware started to monitor this and keep track of uh, the percent or the amount of wetlands that we've lost. We've lost about 5,000 acres since the late or the early 1980s. Um, over the past 30 years non-tidal forested freshwater wetlands have um, suffered two-thirds of the documented wetland losses. These wetland losses can be attributed to development, conversion to agriculture, or natural losses as well. 